Not few weeks, we need approximately by the uh, one presentation per, per month. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh wait, are we supposed to do our topics next? Okay, Friday? we can't. We can't do it next Friday. I'm not going to be here. Super. No, okay. Okay. Motion to move it into two fives. Can we do it? No, no. Like the week from Monday. Mm -hmm. Like this Monday. Monday? Not this Monday. A week from this Monday. So, like um, the weekend yeah. today. Yeah. That allows me to cover the yeah, yeah. I'm departing to a conference for a couple of days. And when you present, you'll be at the conference. Uh, well, I, I will set up for, so that you present at the time when I'm traveling. And uh, either my postdoc, Dr. Yun Han, or David Brockner, they both will substitute me and listen, record, and then I will watch it as a, as a best entertainment and great, great recording. Okay. Right, and we love David. David Quick's for computational, though, doesn't he? That's who you, that's what you do. I just saw Lyndon wow. too. Wow. wow. Yeah, David was my first TA. He spilled nitric acid on me. So David, I never had David. Yeah, funny story, yeah. Dimitri. In Dead Chem Lab, um, Sam and I were doing a, like the cycle of copper reaction, and David shot the fume hood on my arm, causing me to spill the beaker. On me. Okay, so you, you keep positive memories. Yeah. Oh, nothing, nothing but positive memories in my class. My class was just a vibe. Twelve page lab reports every week. Twelve pages. Were you typing or, or writing by hand? I don't think I've ever written a lab report by hand. I have not. I did it. for the first lab I ever had here. Because I didn't know if we were supposed to write it or type it up. And I waited until like the day before. So I'm like, well. Did that take you? Well, you know? Yeah, really well. <laughs> oh. Oh. It was so messy. Because like you can't go back and move things around. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Maybe you can yeah. Uh, talk to our TAs. Third is other guys. Yeah. Because maybe I'll work for you. We have a Zoe Armstrong and Chauvin. Chauvin. Chauvin for one and two. They're both really sweet. Chauvin? Really sweet. Chauvin takes the Erlenmeyer flask that Zoe used for her wedding because she said she wants to get rid of them and I want to do that. Guys, I said Dimitri wants to start the class. I'm sorry. Thank you. Right. Um, stage and board are provided to melody, and that's it. That's the stage. So, um, here are your choices, right? Yes. So, Monday, second Monday from now, right? Okay. Okay. And uh, second, third, or Wednesday from now, probably again, I will be still going and maybe. There will be um, sort of grading of the homework assisted by uh, either Porto or, or Gray yeah. So, like, we'll just swap like we did the other time? I, I think it, it will be the best. Okay. And it will be less stress on uh, whoever helped me so that and he, he, he asks. And, um, last time I gave you too short of the, of the uh, answer key, but I do have a, a little longer one. Okay. Little by little, if you, if you need, you can look in the in the recordings. So I think the the full complete answer is plus half, and then it escalates as one over n divided by n by. And it's not so scary. Yes, and I'm Courtney Paul. Okay, and here is just the substitution that gives gives you the right answer. So the um. Yeah, this is homework for coming Wednesday. We will be together. And uh, I need to clean my karma. 
<laughs> need to pick the errors. So uh, <clears throat> one one error was was found by Melody, and another I found myself. Too far to oh, I need to focus camera on uh, on here. So the, uh, last time on the blackboard, this factor was forgotten. Therefore, there was some something wrong with uh, final letter. And another thing is that uh, when we uh, divide by four, which is which is good. And when we go to the next step. There is uh, another thing to, to take care of. The answer from and what we use as an input is minus k squared, right? And um, the momentum, the k squared is related to momentum with, uh, with precision after factoring bar. This is an important, uh, unforgivable thing uh, that I, I have forgotten. So probably I will just trim last lecture, this one about at this point, and then everything will go smoothly for anyone who watches on the on the recording. So if I make the uh, substitution, then the stuff in the denominator will um, include the. Uh, would be of yes. now everything is fixed. <laughs> so uh, it is uh, everything uh, here is an except p squared is included into sigma p, which will be bits in the distribution of the this space, right? And then uh, the probability to uh, find that uh, your L, the L from at as with a certain momentum at, uh, at any point of time, because it doesn't change over time, will be uh, square of the wave function in the momentum space. Uh, this uh, gives another factor of like taking square room of this thing. And then the uncertainty to find the open with a certain momentum, you have this sigma p uncertainty distribution. And it is very important that it is inversely proportional to the initial bit initial distribution in the coordinate space and is directly proportional to Planck quantum square. Uh, so if we take these two things together, the answer that we have accumulated by the uh, amount of innovation. I'm not a scope. I, I need just to jump and, and show the um, so this is what, what you got. Uh, uncertainty over the position increases with time. It was narrow and then becomes broader as a, as a t squared. And uh, the uh, uncertainty in the momentum space includes this h bar squared. And if one multiplies these two things together, it should be interpreted as a chance to simultaneously measure position and momentum. And if one practice a product of those, then this uh, h bar from uh, momentum part comes like uh, sigma not cancels and uh, h bar stays here. So if time equals zero, it is uh, equal h bar square over two. And if time increases positive or negative, it will be bigger. So it means uh, uncertainty in the measurement only increases. It never gets better. It always get, gets worse if we are in a quantum world. Okay, I clean my carbon. <laughs> so let's uh, go to the next stage. No, uh, all that is here. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so, uh, and it is uh, referred to as an uncertainty principle, right? Uh, 
uncertainty of position and momentum are bigger than a certain thing. So um, I will try to squeeze two vectors into, into one. And uh, if I do it directly on the breadboard, it is very possible. Maybe if I see that we go quickly enough, I will return back to more fun stuff. Um, so in the next 15 minutes, I'm going to prove this little thing. And then if, if it goes well, I will do the rest of the duration on the board. So what is the uh, equation on the top? You're open at it. You remember in, in the middle of the night, same as the oh, frame, frame. Uh, frame is the, oh. the time independent equation. How come that it has time? Time dependent yes. equation. Okay. Because it has to be. Yes. Okay. There's there's x and Okay, so time dependent is really good. And um, here is a, a thing that uh, is very simple to visualize, but it is a, a little uh, out of box thinking. What if we practice a favorite procedure of sample conjugation? To the wave function, what happens like if we apply conjugation to the to the whole um, Schrodinger time dimension of the equation? So we not only put little stars by the wave function, but we also swap the order of the wave function, and and when we do it, it looks a little unnormal, right? And we need to just to apply this little uh, trick. I mean, we need either to blindly believe or just give a little arguments. So, uh, why this is needed and where we get the application of the two Oh, yes. What is the, when there's little stars next to um, like functions like that, what does that actually mean? Don't change the color. <laughs> Um, uh, it means that if someone decides to represent wave function in form of linear algebra vectors, then star conjugation will change vector to a column, a column to a vector. So, oh, it's like the transpose yeah. and uh, conjugation, okay. uh, conjugation, complex conjugation. Okay. If you, if you write it as an equation anywhere, you have imaginary unit, you swap time. Yeah. If you, we are propagating the, you're propagating in time, and um, here's another. One. I I am a champion of errors. So to to have a formal equation, it it could have the. Uh, imaginary unit and and one constant and we um, I'm in front of imaginary unit swaps. In some sense, uh, this propagation of the conjugated wave function means that we are traveling backwards in time. Uh, and I'll, I'll discuss it later a little bit. So, where and why we need conjugated wave function? Uh, is it just pre uh fantasy, or it has some some benefits for agriculture, the, for 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 human kind? Um, this equation is uh, uh, a bridge between abstract quantum theory and real world. So the a with the angular bracket is, is observable that uh, can be related to Things that you get out of instrument in in, in scientific experiments. The uh, on the right side, so it, it means that if you need to predict an outcome of uh, measurement, you need to know what function the function uh, of uh, of the particle you express, conjugated wave function, and the quantum integration. And by convolution, by by integration, one can get outcomes is that you correlate to what you measure uh, in your apparatus. And we see that here we do have wave functions conjugated, 
and it does depend on time. So in order to process this equation, we do need to know how to treat for it function. Sometimes it is easier to derive an equation for it rather than find a regular wave function and then just work the same. Mm -hmm. So um oh it is an answer to the question that Elsa was asking, right? Yeah, I got it. Conjugation transpose change change sign in front of uh, imaginary unit. Yeah, and one can do it as a little practice. Uh, real part just look at uh, positions for the old diagonal and the imaginary part also change uh, change the sign. So the single but strange thing that we cannot skip. And basically I'm declaring something and not proving but just showing again again from different angles. So if we do have the row vector, row vector, and uh, if we apply conjugation, it will become column. Right? If you do have a column vector, we apply conjugation, it becomes row. Now, what will happen if you apply Permission conjugation to a product of a matrix by a column vector. So the uh, way to derive or prove is to perform this product, get the resulting vector, and then see which set of operation may operations may reproduce the same vector, right? And if one does it carefully, one would find out that uh, one can do row vector multiplied from the left to the conjugated matrix. And if Hermitian, if, if we speak about Hamiltonian, not any matrix, then uh, something that some memorizes and repose in the middle of the night. Hamilton is her mission, her mission is Hamilton. Right? Uh, okay. So, in the regular way, if you have regular wave function, we can interpret that Hamiltonian acts on the function from left to the right. And uh, if you perform conjugation, then Crazy Hamiltonian can be big one. After conjugation, Hamiltonian acts on this conjugation from right to the to the left. And uh, I don't know, is it look, does it look strange for you, or you happy to accept it, or you don't care? I'm happy to accept it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank, thank you, friend. Huh? Okay. Okay. It's a little funky. Oh, quirky. Yeah. It's a little quirky. Yeah. Oh, nice colors. Um, I didn't believe that I will be able to explain it logically, and uh, I didn't know that this year there will be um, students with a good background that they need to appeal to the color perception. <laughs> so, um, blue. X on the sign conjugated will be yeah. magenta acting on, on, on the blue. Okay. Okay. So, and this justifies, uh, like, uh, makes a connection. If you do have uh, uh, time in the time dependent linear equation, and we apply to the little uh, conjugation, then it can you can interpret it 
as um, this little colored bars that should swap their orientation and space and their order, right? So if you change uh, cyan to magenta, it becomes raw and it, it, it comes up front. And to be correct, when I fix the, the button. Okay. And in the, uh, so it was a pictographic linear algebra representation. And now, if you do just algebraic visual from wherever we started from. Okay. So I think uh, we performed really well in time. So I will mute the screen. Wow. Yes, yeah, so perform something better. Oh, well, the, that's it's the best thing if, if you if you match that's something. That's so true. Like that. like Shop one arm, other one up, and it just like waves down. And do it quick and then walk away and just I wish we could see it for it's also you can like walk around for like the mirrors that were like back to back like that. It's like I can see it also for everything. Like, you know, I can do it. I don't know what that's I have something to do with it. Dr. Rogers. Dr. Kenton Rogers. I want to know what that hell is about. I'm trying to bring it out. It's like so long. So, uh, words is given to melody. Space is given to melody to make an announcement. Shut up, guys. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, our user is uh, this time dependent observable. Why we do need it? What did we miss uh, while? Um, Exploring free alkaline space. Do we have this case done, or we need still to, to explore something? Uh, originally, we thought that we have two philosophic questions. One, whether it will continue to move on a straight uh, path, and second, how does the shape will change? Um, we philosophically admitted that it should move on a straight path, but we never proved it. We proved that the shape uh, will, will uh, make it broader, right? How do we prove that it goes on a free path if we, uh, if by the rules of games we can deal only with play functions? There are two ways. One, to design such wave function that will move forward, and it means that initial wave packet will include the, um, so say, not what x. You include not only either the minus x square or, or sigma naught, but it also will include a portion of uh, plane wave moving in a certain direction. And if one repeats the same things as we did before, for forward for transform, backwards for transform, one will get time dependent wave function that will not only expand in shape but also move forward. It is possible, but it is a killer problem. Uh, our Format of just one half uh, of half a year is not sufficient for this. It, or it will be much heavier than homework that you have completed and you did even try. But there is a shortcut. We, like, if we perform this and then find this, uh, instead of A, we do X, expectation value, and then pull as it, as it does over, over T, then we expect to reproduce straight line that uh, it moves linearly with certain momentum, certain velocity. But again, we, we can do it, but it is indeed hard to to, to prove. A shortcut. There were two bodies, Schrodinger and Heisenberg. They were continuing the work with quantum mechanics, and one of them uh, was uh, pushing through the uh, continuous functions for probability, and another one. Was telling that uh, one needs only operators. And 
Well, when you compare to this mechanical approaches, in average Schrodinger win most of the basic coordinates mentioned on the Schrodinger, but at the time they were equal. And in this particular problem and several uh, others, an approach of Heidenberg gives a substantial short time. So basically, we need to prove that expectation value of position as function of time will be initial position plus. Uh, uh, momentum divided by mass times t, right? So it is our expectation from classical, from Newtonian mechanics. But we need to prove that in quantum case it will be the same. So here is uh, an uh, avant-garde idea for today and Monday for sure. If we need only one variable as function of time. Why should we bother and look on this complicated function? Can we just derive an equation for quantum expectation value of position? We take the idea. So, some simplification. And if we do a wave, uh, wave function, we, we need to numerically, we need to record its value in infinite number of points or big, large, large number of points at each time. If you keep track of only one variable, that's just one number at each point of time, it will be substantial uh, uh, simplification. Now, we need to find how expectation value of a quantum greater changes over time. So, which means that we need to design an equation of motion for for the expectation value. And we do have uh, integral d x psi r x t d psi r x t. So uh, basically, we need just to take a derivative. And the integration and derivative are performed over different variables. So if you swap the order, Mm. No one of really crucial food supper. No harm to agriculture. <laughs> um, X, D, 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 and then this um, psi star e psi. Formally, each of the things done depend on D. So we have product of functions and we apply a derivative. Mm, Sam was deriving, Melody was deriving. I can't look. derive. Don't even oh, you can? Yes. Yeah. I can't. Come on. I, I, no, I, I, I literally don't even know where to start with. Uh, I'll help, please. Uh, I, unless, uh, uh, then, uh, you, you just raise the voice, which means you, you care about it. Let's, let's go together. I care not to do it. Here, but I'll raise your hand the entire time. So let, let's let. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm. Waffle? No. Yeah. Right. Can you waffle? All right, let's do it. So, so um, when you have also got one, but there's something. When you have a product of two functions, how do you take derivative? Product rule. Okay, does it tell yeah. anything? I don't know why you make it. Okay. It's okay. Well, it's it's easy. Easy. It will be the best combining curve for you. Okay. So, now let's do more. I'm so tough. Repeat just this one without change. Okay. And now, um, let's uh, do. Uh, so uh, let's, let's try to verbalize for the group. What does it tell us? It's the, fun, it's the first function. Well, how many functions do we have there? Three? Uh -huh. Derivative oh, of boy. the first, first times, times the second plus oh. the derivative of the second times the first. How can you do that? How can you do that? If you were off recording, it's, 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 it's a big place. Oh, no, we are on recording. 
Yeah. I don't know how to do it with three functions. I only know how to do it with two. Uh, uh, what is it? it would be GH. So I'm assuming you would do. So like F prime GH plus F G prime. Thank you. Plus yeah. F G prime. So yeah, you would right do. Right down the line. So you're going to do three times L prime of X plus H G prime of X. And then you're going to also add it to, and then you have UG, and basically do that for the entire year. So, um, how many terms do we do? Like in uh, what melody did you show to us? Uh, uh, if there's a product of wait, 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 wait. So, melody did show product of two functions gives derivative uh, consisting of two terms, right? No, can you show it once again? Um, or you all the white stuff? I didn't, but I have stuff under that I was not sure of. Okay, we will we'll close the eyes for the, for the lower part. Yeah. Just not like so the UT prime. So yes. How many terms? Two. Okay. And each of them is product of two. If there are three functions, how many terms? Three. Two. Yeah, right. No. Okay. 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 So there will be summation of three terms. First. So that one. Second. Okay. And third. Is this what you're thinking? Bracket. Bracket. Okay. Yeah. Now uh, let's watch on, on Melody's derivation once again. M Melody, I, I apologize to stop your important thing. Just first line. Okay. I was. This is my initial. Uh, you on, on the, oh, okay. the uh, for, for, for the, I can make so, this bigger. So derivative applies to the first. Derivative applies to the second. Yeah. Right? So, uh, can you just repeat psi star a psi uh, three times? And then you will decide what you put where you psi star? Yeah. Space. Okay. Oh, no. Space. All right, all right. Now I'll get rid of it. You just tell us the Next time, once again. Okay. Psi star. Okay, so, and let's uh, write it telegraphically once again because uh, we will be on, on camera. Let's just put the page. Oh, it can be that. Yeah, yeah. Right. let's do it once again. Yeah. Okay, now we do need to practice derivative. Derivative is applied to only one function in this uh, product, uh, in, in the product, yeah. right? So we can apply it to the, to the first, to the second, or to the third. Make sense? Yeah. And we can calligraphically erase DDT yeah, in front of it. That's All right. Yeah. The there, yeah. DDT. And then this is unchanged. Now, DDT in front of it. Okay, yeah. And here, yes. Okay, right. yeah. Thank you. Done. That's it. And just we can just do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, cool. To make sense. Of, yep. You're, you're done. Oh. It wasn't so so hard. Right. Like the caps. Right. So okay. so for the caps. Yeah. Very easy. I just have to make You'll tell me what's right. Cool. How do we interpret and what, what do we what do we uh, see here? Each term we can put integral, integral dx, integral dx, 
and all these little things. What else? Um, if our A is a position operator or momentum operator, position is just X, momentum operator is just derivative. They do not depend on time. So in broad variety of cases, we can group this term because operator doesn't depend on time. Sometimes it does, but then it's just a little more complicated. Now, what do we what are we left with? I'm going, I'm, I'm not going to direct anything, I'm just going to do, rewrite and then I will call for your intellectual help in total. So one, one, once again, D D T of A equals integral D X D D T by star multiplied by Say plus integral dx uh, psi star a multiplied by d dt for regular psi. Let's analyze. Yeah, because J is ten minutes. I'm very happy. Let's analyze and uh, do any connections. Oh, okay. Any connections to what we discussed before I started, uh, or before we all together I started deriving uh, on the blackboard. Uh, the thing that uh, I was preparing for a little less preferred students and trying to appeal to color schemes. Do you see any connection between this equation and color schemes? It's color blocks. Yes, color blocks. So, what does color blocks were telling us about? This. I see you're focusing your like trying to figure it out. So just try to express by your own words what this color box um, were declaring. This part of like if you're taking the perimeter both in a column or a row. Is equal to different stuff. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, but told everything correctly. It's it's a tremendous help. So she gave uh, an idea that if we do see a derivative of either regular wave function or crazy wave function, we do have a rule what we can substitute it with. Did you say? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Did, did everyone hear it? Yes. Yes. So we need to look back to our notes uh, before and plug in uh, an expression for for this derivative. Why? This is much more serious question. We can like like a monkey follow the rules and do substitutions, but who, who cares? What, what is it? we we are. Uh, we, we want to be thinkers. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it was on the recording. <laughs> um, so, and, and the, the idea, math is very simple. It, it, it's, it doesn't justify the 50 minutes lecture. It can be all written in, in uh, one half minute. But the idea is, is not easy. So, we do want to develop an equation of motion for a variable for a situation variable. In very rare cases, derivative will be equal to constant and you can direct integrate, typically in differential equations. A derivative of unknown function is equal to linear combination of this function or other derivatives. Right? And then we can solve it and find the find, find the answer. Like 
So we do want to see any functions other than this. Uh, we, we want to get rid of the function and we want to get something valuable on the right side that will construct a good differential equation, something that we can uh, something that we can solve. Ideally, it will be either a constant or some linear combination of an, another alien, dA or dt equals a, then I would be happy. Maybe it will be something simpler or, or more complicated, but uh, I want to find expectation value of something. Okay. Did I scare you or not yet? You always scare me. <laughs> Today I was not, not trying to. Today we, we all should, should be pretty much. Mm -hmm. So I will continue. I will continue uh, following this one on the other side and give a read this little introductory part. So I'm going to substitute these two things. X, and then I need to put something instead of first zero and then a not x sign uh plus integral dx sign star a and then i need to put something into the graph so uh what do i put here sign derivative of the wave function is equal to function so star star times star I like the direction of your thought. It is correct, but it is too early. Let's be simple. So, as no, not as simple. So, suppose you are who you are. You are experts in quantum theory who already did postulates of quantum mechanics. And mm -hmm. in the middle of the night, you remember either plane waves or time dependent Schrodinger equation. So I assume that you have it, you hold it in your brain. Now, if you do know time dependent Schrodinger equation and someone asks you, dvt over psi equals two, dvt over psi is equals two, and now look onto Schrodinger equation. dvt over psi equals two. And you are over each mouse, yeah. Um, the H Negative I or H bar and, and H hat. H hat. Yeah. <laughs> no. Times psi of XD. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Good. So uh, now let's be a little bit more sophisticated. So Elder did her part. Now it's time of Ella. You you already told it, but you will just repeat it. Right. So uh Based on what we derived uh, in previous several minutes before we went to the, to the whiteboard, if we need dvt or psi star, it will be equal to dvt or psi star. Psi star times the h hat. Times h hat. And maybe it will be also uh, plus i over h bar, right? <coughs> sure. Okay. Yes. I, I, I do yes. raise the hands to okay. speak for okay. its victory. <laughs> yeah, Molly. Okay, so it's what is the what is adding? It, so is it the integral? It's not adding. Here? It's just I'm oh, I'm, I'm just telling positive. it is positive. Okay. I apologize for my uh, beautiful color. Okay, I got it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, I don't know why you don't don't finish things ahead of time. So this squeeze, but now the most and uh, most important uh, part of our meeting. So the sign here is different. Here is plus, here is minus. The integral, <laughs> huh? The integral can be placed outside to, to uh, maybe just the like dx, and we can put i for a bar also out of bracket, and now we have here psi star h psi and then we have okay I'll minus i for h bar into dx 
Do we forgot a a here? Okay. Now here I write psi star a h slash. What is the difference? Like there is a plus and minus. What what else is different? Psi star here. Psi star here. Like squeeze the order. Yes. Okay. And if you if you take our notation that uh, this one will be just expectation value of what is in the, in the circle, right? You can tell that it will be I inch bar, expectation value of half, minus I expectation value of half, of half equation. So Haha equation was derived by Heisenberg. And uh, it, it, um, some people are getting tired to write two terms. Therefore, swapping of the order H minus AH is often replaced by rectangular bracket H A. And then uh, uh, time derivative of expectation value of operator equals to I H bar expectation value of commutation of this operator with the domain. So Heisenberg equation of motion is a replacement of uh, Schrodinger equation and it works really well if we know what you want to measure. It's not, not general philosophy, but if you want statistics, you want moment, then Heisenberg will be our best friend. Uh, I think I think we are approaching the end. Let me just bring the slide that declares. So, a high equation, uh, some work about transmission of navigation, uh, plugging in, making swap, left to right, getting getting a half. Um, an important important consequence if the uh, if the I know that I'm taking the unit. If the time, if the commutation equals zero, then the um, time derivative of a variable is um, equal to zero, and then it doesn't change over time. I remember it for the, for the whole life in the middle of the, of the night because I've got B in this class in my time because I didn't answer this question. <laughs> Okay, meeting is done. Looking forward to see you after you have a nice weekend, right? Yeah, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just few more microphones. Test audience microphone. Test. Okay. This is what we should do next time.